Hello again and welcome back to another episode. Today I thought we'd do a bit of a catch up on some previous projects, let you know what's kind of going on and uh, introduce you to some new projects that are coming. There is so much on, it's just so busy at the moment, it's unreal. Um, over on this side, I've learned how to do panning now. Oops. The air conditioner remote, you don't need to see that. We have the K1000 that had the, um, the problem with the battery. Um, that's still running and working well. Uh, no issues with that one, so that's a finished project. In the middle here we have this Kieron. This is this 28mm F2 that I made a video on. This one had the um, the stuck iris in it. And uh, as you can see, we've got the iris working. Uh, you can see that. Let me... Try and find the lever. Okay, it's staying stopped down now. Still got some problems with this lens by the look of it. But we do have an iris, so it looks like you can manually set it rather than it being open all the time, but okay. At least it's a usable lens, I suppose. But yeah, there's still some reassembly and testing to finish off on that one. Um, I remember saying in one of the videos about the Olympus lens that had the fungus in it. And this was the lens that was full of fungus. And as you can see now the fungus has gone. That was using hydrogen peroxide. But it came with a metal lens cap. And I dropped it on the front element and I smashed the front element in half. I do have another lens that I showed in yesterday's Olympus 100th birthday video. But yeah, I need a new, uh, a new front element for that one. But the hydrogen peroxide did a really good job of getting rid of all the fungus. So highly recommended. Like I said, getting to the fungus is the hard part. Getting rid of the fungus is relatively easy. Don't use these metal lens caps there. Or if you do use them, don't, don't drop them like I just did then. <laughs> oh. It's the thing of trying to reach around this, um, this phone to, to make the video. Still not mastered it. So that's where we're at with that one. Um, you can still take pictures with it, the crack doesn't actually appear. What a lot of people used to do in the old days is you get a black pen, same as if you've got scratches on the front element. Um, if you've got a scratch, just get a black pen and just fill the scratch with a black pen, um, like a Sharpie, and the lens will carry on working fine. The important element in any lens is, this, is the back element. Um, that's the problem with this key on this back element is it's absolutely knackered. Um, this is a 300mm um, Kanika lens and um, I've taken the front of it off, um, I've stripped it down, taken the front of it off. That, that part of it seems to be okay, but this is the front uh, section of that lens and as you can see it's got horrendous haze. Um, I'll get the torch. I don't want to blind you. If you look, you can see that's haze in a lens. It's horrendous. So that's another project as well. It's very incredibly dusty, but it's just been sat out. But yeah, that's the issue with this lens. So not fungus, but haze. And yeah, whenever you're buying lenses or checking lenses out, always take a little torch with you just so you can have a look through them. But yeah, that's another project that's in hand. This one is a Canon FD 100-200 and this one is absolutely chock-a-block with fungus. So this is another project, but this is a zoom lens. So this one will be an interesting one to try and do, but you can see the amount of fungus that's in that. That's a real nasty one. And then we have some cameras that I'm currently working on. This is a iRes 35. Um, this is a Japanese rangefinder, very heavy, very solid. Um, shutter was stuck wide open, so I'm busy working on rebuilding the shutter in this one. Um, beautiful cameras, but really, really heavy. And uh, I don't want any more bits falling off of it. But yeah, beautiful camera. Another 90s, 1950s rangefinder. So rather than being a a photographer, I've come to the conclusion I'm a gear haul. 
Um, I'm a crap photographer to be honest. I don't take an awful lot of pictures and the ones I do take are normally test rolls of cameras. If you're expecting anything on here like creative visionary work, um, this is the wrong channel for you. My main interest is in equipment. I'm an engineer by trade and I love mechanical machines. You know, just look at that shutter assembly in there. I think that's brilliant. But yeah, we've got the shutter working in it. I've just got to get it put back together. This is another one that came in. This is a Voigtlander Prominent. Another real heavy, chunky quality camera from the 50s. It has interchangeable lenses. Um, when you think rangefinder, interchangeable lenses, you always think of Leica or Contax or maybe Kiev. But this is a Voigtlander. I think there's about four or five lenses for it. And this has got a, it says it doesn't wind on. And it says that the shutter doesn't work on it. But uh, this is the shutter trip lever down here. So something goes on. Something happens with it. So I'm, I think this one's probably going to be saveable. But yeah, just look at the uh, look at the engineering and the design of the. This is just an adapter that's been put in. But this is another beautiful camera in not great condition. But uh, it's another one I think is worth saving. I think that's the self timer actually. See it creeping along. There you go. So it does do something. Is it going to go again now? I don't know. But yeah, that's another repair job. And uh, yeah, it doesn't wind on. The shutter button doesn't press down. But that's another project. But yeah, you know, that's a stunning camera. It needs a lens for it. But uh, yeah, very, very nice. Beautifully designed. And um, finally this week, oh, this is uh, the top of the Minolta range. This is a 303, not the Bs. The Bs were slightly um, dumbed down versions. This has got a uh, Bell & Howe 28mm 2.8 on it. Okay. Um, but yeah, this has some issues as well. And uh, take the lens off. Sometimes the shutter sticks up. It doesn't always seem to work reliably at all speeds. Of course it will now. You see it's been well used. There we go. That's the sort of problem with it in that certain speeds the shutter stays up. And uh, now the mirror doesn't want to move. So yeah, you know, this has got a variety of issues this one. But yeah, that's another repair job. So yeah, it's turning more into a camera sanctuary, really. Um, getting a hold of a lot of these cameras, very, very cheap. And uh, yeah, the lens is good on that one. And yeah, trying to repair them and keep them going, because of course none of this stuff's made anymore. So, you know, if we can keep it working, then uh, so much the better. Iris is good. Yeah, it's a little bit cloudy in there, but... I think that will, that won't need stripping down. I just need to be a TLC, hopefully. But yeah, Bell and Howell lens, it's not, uh, it's not extremely desirable. So that's kind of where I am at the moment. Um, snowed under with work. Um, this isn't paid work. Um, I'm disabled. I don't actually uh, work. So I have all, all day, every day to play around with this stuff. It stops me going mad. But um, I have mobility problems. I use a mobility scooter and also a a wheelie walking frame to get about so most of my pictures are just taken in the garden here I live in sheltered accommodation so uh, a lot of the pictures are just of the communal garden that's about as far as I can go really um, in the summertime I hope to get out on the mobility scooter but it's winter now and it's just like the light is terrible at the moment so I'm thinking about doing some macro stuff indoors um, I quite enjoy doing macro work um, so there might be a series on that coming up. If you guys want to know about techniques, etc., then by all means ask away. But I'm not convinced that you guys need that. I think you seem to be quite a, a, a technically proficient audience that seems to be more interested in cameras and camera history and the history of photography generally, equipment-wise. Um, so I'm not really going to dwell too long on you know how to take an exposure meter reading and 
you know, this is what a 120 film looks like. I'm not going to teach you to suck eggs. Um, there are plenty of beginner videos on the internet, and I don't really think having one more is really going to help very much. Um, my advice to anybody who's thinking of starting new with film would be to search your Google for a local camera club. Um, my local camera club, you can go along just as a visitor and see what's going on. Um, there you'll meet people doing digital as well as film. The other thing to do is to use the Ilford tool to find a local dark room. Um, some clubs have dark rooms, other clubs don't, but there are dark rooms around. And on this app from Ilford, it will show you um, all the dark rooms in your area, whether they're a club dark room or somebody who's got a dark room who's willing to share it or let you use it for a while. And there you'll find all the information that you need um, in a camera club. I can't stress that enough. Don't buy a camera. Join a camera club and buy one off of a member there. You can test it. You can see it far safer than buying off of eBay and probably a lot cheaper. All the cameras that are being recommended for beginners like Canon AE1s, Pentax K1000s, they're becoming collector's items now and the prices are just going through the roof. Same with like little compacts like the uh, the Yashica T series, T3s, T4s. They're in collector's territory. You can buy a Nikon F2 cheaper than one of those now. So uh, that's my advice. Join a camera club. Go on to eBay and look for books. Um, I've got a whole time life series that I had when I was a kid. It was a fiver a month and you got a book each month. And it builds up into this huge collection that covers every aspect of photography. Um, get hold of books by people like Ansel Adams, Edward Weston. Um, that will teach you a lot about photography. Um, far more than anybody could cover in a video. Um, I know reading's probably out of fashion nowadays, but uh, photography or film photography is a mature medium and books have been written about it for over a hundred years. So there's a whole reference library of information there that you can go and uh, research and look. I buy books from a company called, I think it's World of Books. And these are books that have been thrown away and are going to go and be recycled and they sell them on. They're about two, three pound a book. So there's a good saving there and they're, they're always in quite good condition and they arrive pretty quick. So it's quite nice to build yourself up a little reference library. I don't know what you photograph. I don't know what kind of cameras you use. Um, you know, it's all very, very individual. All I'm doing really is just showing you what's available. Um, compared to digital cameras in the world of film, there's so much variety. And uh, a camera is always a camera. Even a hundred year old camera still takes pictures. Anyway, enough of me rambling on. I hope this has brought you up to speed on where I'm at. And thank you very much if you've watched this far. We're approaching the uh, 100 subscribers and I'm going to be doing a giveaway at the 100 subscriber level. It'll be one of those ones where you put something in the comments and it gets randomly pulled out. So I'm going to give away 10 rolls of HP5 and that is either in 120 or in 35mm. So uh, yeah, I think we're on 85, 84 subscribers or something at the moment. But yeah, once we hit the 100 subscribers we'll be doing a giveaway. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great week and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one.